All right. We have this hemisphere, an object that starts from a negligible velocity here, we can make it as point to zero, to, to a point where it leaves the uh, surface. We want to find the height at which it leaves the surface. All right. So we can use conservation of energy first to find what is the speed here. This is, let's say this is V0, this is V. So we use conservation of energy, say Ki plus Ui plus W non-conservative equal to Kf uh, plus Cuf. If I take y-axis to be upward uh, from, from this level, now this is x-axis, then Ki is basically zero. And because there's no friction, W non-conservative is also zero. Ui is mg times yi, which is r, equals kf, one half mv squared, plus uf, which is mgh. That's conservation of energy. And m cancels out, I can find v squared, uh, to be 2g times r minus h, right? If I move this over and multiply by 2, cancel the m's. This is v squared. But we know that centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. So um, this gives us the v squared over r if we want at any h. So now we want to see at this point that with height h, there are two forces acting on this object. One is the force of gravity, which is mg, and one is the normal force, in general, which is in this direction. So I, I take a, a coordinate system in here, new coordinate system, not this as x and y, parallel to the surface as x, perpendicular to the surface in the direction of n and y. Right? And now I apply Newton's law because I want to uh, find information about n normal forms. I know that there is an acceleration centripetal for the center at that point, which is in negative y direction. Right? So if I apply sum of fy equal to m a y, what do I get in that coordinate system of x and y? N minus mg cosine theta. Yeah, equals if, yeah, if this angle is theta, which is the same as this angle, um, if I take this angle as theta, let's call this theta, uh, sum of Fy is normal force magnitude minus mg cosine theta equal to MAY. MAY means M times the y component of a. Because a is in negative y direction, I put negative of magnitude of acceleration. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So now I have this v squared. I plug it in. So I can say n equals to mg cosine theta minus m over r times v squared, which is 2g times r minus h. And now, theta is related to h and r also. Mm -hmm. How is cosine theta related to h and r? It's h over r. Yeah, cosine theta in this right triangle, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is h over r. So I have n equal to Is that clear, what I'm doing? Just manipulating it. I put r in here. It becomes r over r, which is 1, minus h over r. But if it's negative, it becomes h over r minus 1. And this is 2mg and plus. Um, OK? So now you see I have everything in terms of mg and h and r. Let me come back here. n will be what? 
two mg h over r and mg h over r becomes three mg h over r minus two mg, right? So I get this equation for n in terms of h and our other constants. And now I want to see at what height it starts losing contact. So when, when h uh, decreases, this n decreases. And the minimum value for h is when n is equal to 0. So we said n equal to 0, and h is equal to h minimum where it is still with contact, right? So now if you do that, 0 equal to 3, then mg can be canceled. So for h minimum, mg cancels. These two comes here, multiplied by r to divide by 3. So h minimum will be 2r over 3. That's where it loses contact with the surface. Alright? Mm -hmm. So it's conservation of energy to find how fast it's going, and then Newton's law to see how much normal force there is. And then it, when normal force is zero, it loses contact, and that's the height.